and we are live good morning crypto warriors and welcome back to gem and crypto episode 1201 today is friday march 8 2024 and i'm king and i'm bitcoin z here to bridge the gap between cryptocurrency and the community monday through friday at tennis <laughs> today's top stories pro bitcoin senator cynthia lunas pushes stablecoin bill gemini mode forming a juggernaut with genesis before it went to smoke Travala's new Bitcoin rewards program targets top tier travelers as Bitcoin fever rises and MicroStrategy raises convertible notes offering to $700 million amid stock rally. But first and foremost, what's going on in those prices? Oh, yeah. So let's take a look at our prices for today. Uh, Bitcoin sitting at 68858 uh, up 2.7%. Ethereum sitting at $3,976, up 4.3% today. Binance Coin at 485, up almost 9% at 8.9 today. Solana at 152, up 3.6% today. XRP sitting at 62 cent, up 0.5% today. Cardano at 73 cent, down 0.2% on the day. Dogecoin at 16 cent, up 8.9% on the day. And good old Shiba Inu, worth less than a hole, uh, than a penny with a hole in it, up 11% on the day. So uh, those are your top 10 coins. Some of the recently added coins. Uh, uh, let's see, let's slide back here because they keep sliding it. Some of the recently added Simpson family, Don Juan, Cat, and Defender Bot, uh, whatever that is. Uh, most visited, Solidus, uh, AI Tech, MAGA Trump up 26%, and OPSEC, uh, as well. And then, uh, some of the trending coins, of course, Shiba Inu, Gorilla up 63%, and then Jasmine Coin. And again, let's take a look at this fear and greed index, it's been slowly moving. Woo! Uh, into extreme greed we are in we are almost at 90 uh, of extreme greed we were at 86 earlier this week uh now at 89 so yeah it's starting to get real greedy people and uh really quick only because you mentioned it was actually trending here i'll throw you all a quick token as well dt 2024 it pumped yesterday 100 percent um <laughs> went from seven i saw it i saw it go from seven cent to uh about 14 cent or something whatever of course uh, Satoshi's, you know, just a few thousand Satoshi's, but you can see here is at point zero. I said 13, excuse me, point zero one three cent. It was at point zero uh zero seven cent when I saw it yesterday. But yeah, for those who are interested, the DT 2024 tokens out as well. Uh, I know some people like it, but literally, yeah, I mean, the liquidity is super low, only 63,000. So I don't know how many people are actually in it, but okay. I saw it yesterday, like 29,000, 20,000. I was like, oh. All right, here go another Donald Trump token popping. Hey, hey, you know the price. You know the price is hella low when they got to use scientific notation. Like, goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I said it wrong. Some quick shout outs. What's going on, Laura Smith, Chloe Dior, Marcellus Love, Philip Shaw, Cliff BTC, Memories of Mike, Tommy Brown, Wisdom Bars, Max Kaiser, Spliff on standby for that crazy price prediction of seventy five k. Um, when did he predict that? Uh, like two days ago, I think. Okay, well, hold on. Let's make sure we clear on something. Because, you know, I ain't been saying nothing lately. I've been hearing all y'all talk price predictions. I've been seeing people everywhere talking, talking price. But I said 75K at the last cycle, didn't I? Yeah, I said exactly. that is the number we need to hit at first before anything. We really? never hit 75 Yeah, I, uh, that's what I call it. Yeah, I call it as my high. I call it as my last high. We hit 69. I said 75. So, yeah, 70. We, I mean, yeah, we gotta hit seventy, but we got we got round that corner first before we before we break out, break out. But uh, it's coming, it's definitely coming. Memories of Mike, uh, did I get settled in? So I am in the new crib, not fully settled in. Pardon me, folks. Wednesday I had a shoot in San Diego. I was just telling Bitcoin Zay my schedule. If you all are any in the locations in the next uh, week or so, let me know. I already talked. Shout out to Josh Coleman. I got to share the picture. Happy uh, birthday to him yesterday. Another Bitcoin miner out there as well as uh. A soap distributor and everything else in between but um he's down in houston i tell him i was gonna link with him i'll be in houston next week folks from 17th 18th 19th i'll be in tampa for about three or four days after that uh and then i'll be in phoenix arizona for about four days after that toward the end of the month so if you're in uh, houston tampa or phoenix give me a shout and we'll definitely try to link and have like a crypto little talk chat meet up or something one night um but other than that no i have bo uh, boxes everywhere and i'm not fully settled in yet so excuse the echo but let's get this show rolling. Top story of the day. Pro Bitcoin Senator Cynthia Loomis pushes stablecoin bill. Bitcoin Zay, what's going on, with Cynthia Loomis and the stablecoin oh. bill? Yeah, so if you know Cynthia Loomis, uh, she's been a big proponent of the Bitcoin and crypto industry. Um, she is drafting regulations for stablecoins. 
<clears throat> after attacking major stablecoin firm Tether in 2023. Um, she's <clears throat> working jointly with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand for several months on a bill aiming to provide regulatory clarity for stablecoins and protect investors. Um, citing several spokespeople for Loomis and Gillibrand's office, uh, the report notes that the senators hope to officially announce the news following encouraging feedback from multiple stakeholders, uh, including the New York Department of Financial Services, the Federal Reserve, the Treasury Department, and the National Economic Council have all provided technical assistance on the Senate bill. So uh, she's one of the people that she has talked about crypto legislation. She's discussed uh, trying to introduce, uh, I believe in Wyoming, introduce companies getting, uh, you know, tax breaks and people being able to move their business there. Also uh, mining, uh, all of those things. I actually did a spaces with her before. A very, very nice woman, very smart. And uh, she understands that we can't have the same thing that happened in crypto for over a decade where we had no regulatory clarity. Nobody knew what was going on. Gray area stuff. So with the uh, stable coins, I would prefer they have uh, some sort of stable coin regulation with competition. So basically, if we have stable coins, the best money should win out and whatever people want to use is there. And really, anything is better than the CBDC. So shout out to Cynthia Loomis. There it is. Shout out to Cynthia Loomis. Uh, again, the good thing is that these conversations are happening. Uh, we saw the extreme degree. Is the mic better now? I just turn down the uh, the mic and everything. People say it was a little chippy. Is it better? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I messed up all these settings. People, I had the perfect settings for the mic. Y'all not even do this shit. Somebody set it up for me. I had the perfect settings. Now I got to go back. Uh, but no, I, I'm glad to see that this is at the forefront. Of course, as the price continues to pump, this will continue to be at the forefront because that extreme greed isn't just for the retail market or the crypto market. That is for the market as a whole. Markets and markets, people in general are paying attention. Nobody's talking about it which is hilarious and by the way i uh one of the points i wasn't on the show today so i forgot to mention it uh or i didn't have a chance to mention it but what is his name uh oliver is it oliver john oliver what's the, the comedian talk show host oh so i noticed about five or six days ago now he did a uh segment on crypto and it was called uh pig butchering scams it's essentially pig butchering scams uh we've all gotten the text where it's like hey is this john and it's like, who is this? And it's like a pretty girl picture pops up. Oh, this is Susan. I just want to know. Oh, I, I'm sorry, John, wrong number. But now that they, I know who this is, tell them I just want to take you on a date. You get to talking. <laughs> they get to actually dating you, catfishing you. And then eventually they hit you with the, uh, from what I've seen on the show, as they explain it, they're saying that, hey, don't give me your money, but I'm actually an entrepreneur. I do cryptocurrency. And here's a uh, crypto project you can go into, and they usually give them fake websites, fake projects, fake exchanges for them to load their money into, which the hackers or scammers actually control. And this is a person they never met before, but been online talking to for months. All right. So it was interesting. So I'm watching this thing. I was like, oh, this is crazy. It's pig butchering. And then like halfway through, I'm thinking, I'm like, boy, this just came out five days ago. And you're talking about the some big scams going on in crypto that's getting people for half a million dollars and stuff what timing what timing what timing people the mainstream is definitely paying attention to the prices but they're not reporting on it for a reason the extreme greed is here they are shooketh and they don't know what's going to happen next so uh i mean to me this is all good news and good signs to see senators talking about it you got late night talk show hosts trying to make their rounds and poke funds and poke holes into it uh and then you got the people like the spencer cornelius of the world who don't even say anything wasn't that guy talking about how bad Bitcoin and crypto was? He, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You can't even come back and do an honest assessment and be like, hey, maybe I was in the wrong about some of these things. But uh, yeah. I just love to see it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you're right. As far as mainstream media, you already know what's happening at this point. They all come back at the same time. They all get their cues from the price number go up technology. So and now all of a sudden they're coming back and they're on every mainstream show too. Now you got Kramer talking about it every day. Uh, you got these old farts on there talking about, I still don't see how Bitcoin has any value. I don't get it. And, then, and there we go. And then bull market's back. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm glad it's back. Proving those wrong once again, once again. Uh, let's see. What else do we have going on in the stories in the news today? Gemini mode forming a juggernaut with Genesis before it went to smoke. Ooh, that's pretty tough. Uh, looks like Barry Silbert, CEO of Digital Currency Group, once pitched creating a combined company with Gemini that would compete with the likes of Coinbase and FTX. Gemini co-founder Cameron Winklevoss 
once considered a merger with digital currency group and its cryptocurrency lending firm genesis global capital that could have birthed the publicly listed juggernaut to compete with the likes of coinbase and ftx i'm actually glad they well i won't say i'm, I'm glad i was almost gonna say i'm glad they didn't do it because i just i would imagine will usher in so much regulation because they were almost semi pro regulation but actually on the flip no i think this would have been good because if gemini twins the wing boss twins excuse me uh and dcg actually did have a publicly traded company and was really on the ground floor when it comes to lobbying for different crypto things i think there would be some decent overseers uh to kind of like push back against a lot of the regulatory environment we're seeing now so i don't think it would have been a terrible thing but uh this was a claim by dcg ceo barry silbert in a newly surfaced email to colleagues from october 2022 after a luncheon with wingo boss three months before genesis eventually went bankrupt oh you talking about uh shit that was said at an la lunch man get out yeah, of here pretty much <laughs> what did he, they tell him to come to the house anytime and he called one day and they was like huh Who? How, you get my, how you get my number and address bro you told me at the lunch one day to come to your house anytime oh man listen man mm -hmm. <laughs> uh the email was shared. oh how did i know look the email was shared by lawyers representing dcg oh my goodness they are trying to oh wow they reaching here uh, and Barry Silver as part of a March 6 motion to dismiss a three billion dollar fraud lawsuit by the Attorney General of the State of New York. The email was used to argue against allegations that Silver knew Genesis was insolvent and believed it should be hidden from counterparties. Uh, the email was used to argue. Uh, why did they just do that twice? Look, people, everybody makes mistakes. All right, <laughs> telegraph and copy and paste. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Copy and paste, bro. What? Uh, he is intrigued about the ideal of a closer part uh, partnership between Genesis, Gemini, DCG, including a potential merger of the companies, wrote Silver. Uh, Silver said the merger would be super exciting to investors and a potential $1 billion raise could lead to a public listing within 24 months. So again, money, money, money. It didn't work out. They thought it'd be a juggernaut, as you said. Uh, but again, to me, this is funny because it's like, even if this is a real email, now you're bringing this like, to the courts as a reason like to get your point across i don't know kind of weird like that's where is the whack part where is this you can't even speak it and in, in, in an informal fashion without someone keeping it as as like bible text and then bringing it to court it's kind of crazy to me i don't mm -hmm. know what are your thoughts on this oh yeah yeah like you said it was one of those la lunches uh where you actually people think yeah he's actually messing with me man we're gonna do business together it's like no no no, you don't understand <laughs> uh they're just being nice uh, um but at the same time i don't think I, I really don't think this was actually real i think it may have been like they were probing to see what what they were thinking uh but at the same time i think they had enough information to see that genesis was on its way down and that they had some bankruptcy stuff in place um so yeah i'm glad they didn't do it uh even if they i, I mean it's kind of like when they brought up lebron going to the warriors this shit wasn't happening but it's interesting to talk about right remember when they was saying that the deadline was like hey warriors called to ask about lebron you really think that the, the lakers took that uh that uh that question serious they were like hmm so you don't want LeBron. What do you really want? And uh, you know what I mean? Like, that's basically all, all this is. Like, LeBron was never going to the Warriors. Stop it. Um, so, uh, again, you're right. Why do they bring this up later? Hey, man, clout is a hell of a drug. Now it's making it look like, like hey, man, we was in business. We was about to be in business with Gemini, man. You never know. Uh, but, again, uh, what's happened has happened, and uh, I'm glad it didn't. Yeah. Um, everything happens for a reason. I'm glad they kind of stayed separate. It would been interesting uh so look i know you's about to call all right i got listen bitcoin chris i knew you were about to call i saw you in the comments i put this here listen here's the deal I, i'm gonna give you your flowers but i gotta also give you the real list <laughs> hey you good you good you good chris you're knocking out the park i love it but listen man i'm moving brother <laughs> <laughs> no shout out to bitcoin chris great call on lai man uh what you got for us today man what's the word just want to say happy Friday, everybody. Let me um, bring LAI it up while definitely talking. doing numbers. Can y'all hear me? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. Excellent. Uh, what up, Bitcoin? Zay? What up, what up, you guys? Happy what Friday, up, man. I was at the resort, Conrad, Orlando yesterday. Fire, fire property, not too far from the crib. So, had a great day. But, you know, just want to make sure I hop on here, say thanks for hopping on. Every, so, you, wait, you spending every some of that money already? <laughs> Nah, I ain't spent nothing, man. I got, these, <laughs> I got these trades over right now. Your boy doing numbers. <laughs> hey, listen, this was the last seven days. If you remember, folks who are listening, Bitcoin Chris is on last week. He said he had uh, found some interesting tokens. LAI was one of them. We were laughing. He was like, hey, man, I did the homework on it. 
and boom. I mean, uh, he hit me up a couple times last week. At one point, it was at 30%. Another point, 100%. You can see here, seven-day cycle, 96%. Shout out to Bitcoin, Chris. If you're not watching him yet, make sure you go check him out ASAP because he definitely called that. Uh, how did some of those other picks do as well? I didn't get. A ch I haven't had a chance to jump in yet. I was telling Bitcoin, say, I got a, 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 a I won't say a pocket. I have a screen full of money, a capital right now that I want to jump to the project. How were your other projects last week? Um, I got a, I actually reload, reallocated. Um, so what I'll do is I'll send you another screenshot of the new coins that I got. And I, I actually shared it in the discord as well, but as that, that, that five IRE didn't do so good. So I cut that, um, you know, if they're not moving, I'm going to move, I'm going to cut the losers. They're not moving or anything. Smart, I'm going to just cut the winners and go to the winners. But um, nice. besides that, man, I'm going to share the new, I'll share the new picks in the uh, discord for you guys. And I'll send you the DM. But I just want to hop on here and just make sure everybody got some of that bread, man, and say happy Friday and much love to everybody, man. Hey, happy Friday, Bitcoin, happy Friday. Chris. Great calls, man. Great calls on Bitcoin as well because you're charting Bitcoin. Want to make sure you get your flowers on that, man. Hey, everybody give Bitcoin, Chris, a shout. Uh, where can they find you at again? Man? Uh, so on IG, it's official uh, Bitcoin, Chris. Uh, Twitter is going to be Chris9407. All right, hey, I'm digging into the trenches with you officially. I got the, the internet set up. I'm not unboxed yet, but I got everything set up. And uh, like I, I was telling Bitcoin Day for the show, man, I literally got some some capital. I'm ready to go do some DJ and shit with. It's about to go down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, ask old girl, she'll take Chick fil A coin. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Hey, we'll check y'all later, Bitcoin Chris. All right, you guys I take like care. It. Much love. Peace. Right, cheers, cheers. Hey, 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 Bitcoin hey, Chris, man. Great LAI call on that, folks. Great LAI call. Make sure you give him his flowers on that. Hey, if you jumped in on that call and you made some money, send him a tip as well, man. Send him a tip. He definitely called that shit out before it was popular. So great one. And shout out to everyone else uh in the inbox. So I would tell you uh, over the week, I probably got about 15 tokens shot my way. Each of them, I swear to you, people, each of them did like probably 100 to 300 percent. Uh, I was telling Bitcoin, they was just like, I wanted to hop on them, but literally, I didn't have things set up. I was in the moving process. Mo oh, Zay, I didn't even tell you, listen, of all days, the day I decided to move, first mm -hmm. of all, you all messed up, but they made it right. But I had to get a smaller truck. So I was going to hire movers, but I decided to be cheap and do it myself not doing that again it reminded me why i never move myself i am not doing that shit again but hey you, you uh, gotta tell me brother i done moved like 10 times solo hey, hey and i had my cousin me. with me so i know he was hey he was like i'm working him like a slave and stuff so i owe him some a uh, dinner or whatever but uh it took all day and it was pouring down raining i'm talking about thunderstorming the entire day bro i was just like mm -hmm. why today out of all days in, in la where it's not supposed to do the r word so it was a, definitely a crazy move uh but again uh there's always new tokens folks don't worry shout out to uh reggie middleton he kind of just dropped you all a hint uh i know how reggie is so i'll bring it closer to home a little bit for you all he just shout out to reggie middleton he's in the comments he said something about craig Wright. let me scroll up to it uh oh craig craig's rights etf patents i guess are being brought up in court possibly now let me see uh reggie said i'm about to release a video showing how craig Wright wrote the patent that apparently underpins bitcoin etfs with proof of course so with that being said it may be uh worth looking into and researching uh bsv and of course as you all mentioned last week i know people are saying very tasty uh might be under as well uh underbought as well so those are two that you may consider actually paying attention to so mm -hmm. uh those are two new ones or not two new ones but odies but goodies as well all right what else we have going on travala is in the news travala's new bitcoin rewards program targets top tier travelers as bitcoin fever rises of course this is man oh man all the wish calls are coming back too zay you know how many uh uh what's it called uh experts all the experts are coming oh, back yeah. i'm seeing people oh that's what i'll say the one guy who had the crazy hair who in 2017 gripped it over to bitcoin he's doing ai commercials now what's that guy name the Where, um, uh i, I think i remember Austin or something or what? we saw world crypto card yeah 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 uh i can't yeah he had name. glasses i think something oh, i started with a or something but um yeah he had grifted over to doing crypto videos but i'm seeing him on youtube now doing nothing but ai commercials right now i'm just like this is the same dude who is a crypto expert selling classes mad, like this mad bitcoins it's my mad bitcoins huh is it mad oh, i can't bitcoins? remember his name i'm gonna figure I'm, it i'm gonna figure it out bro it was crazy uh mm -hmm. all right but yeah travala's in the news shout out to travala top tier members of travala.com are set to earn 
10% cashback rewards and Bitcoin on travel booking payments made with the Singapore Singapore based travel agency. That's what I'm talking about because uh, initially, I swear their prices were like 10% higher to even begin with. I'm like, bro, I'm paying yeah. you in Bitcoin, man. What are we doing? Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, when you're, and this isn't even a bull run, this is just a bull, a bull cycle right now. I would say, if anything, like, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a nice pump cycle going on right now. I think there's a lot left for an actual bull run. But mm -hmm. I say that to say, I don't know if it's even worth paying in Bitcoin from them right now, unless you're simultaneously buying it right back, essentially. Like, if you're buying it and using it, buying it and using it, buying it and using it, okay. But if you're not buying it and you're just using, 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 uh, 10% cash back wouldn't even cover the spread right now. Bitcoin's pumping past 10% when a week and a half, you know, two weeks, 10 days, it's going past 10%. So I'm not even sure this is a deal that's worth it. But again, this is Travala, a uh, crypto-friendly travel agency, is rolling out a Bitcoin cashback program citing the scarcity of bitcoin as a desirable reward mechanism for its top tier travelers and again it's so crazy that even travala who's been accepting bitcoin is just not rolling this out like imagine they rolled this out when bitcoin is at twenty thousand. man it'll be yeah. amazing for them <laughs> oh you cut up no i just stopped talking i was the one to take it no, okay yeah because <laughs> okay. I, I, I was trying to uh look through and see if it was you but yeah now nah, what's crazy is uh i've used travala a few times before and you're right there was a premium on the price so the the, the 10 percent or what it was before i guess five percent or whatever you're getting back uh they, they kind of covered it themselves with the price action uh you know slick move but i was doing it i remember the first time i did it i did it because i was gonna make a video about it and then i decided i was like oh, i don't know if you want to put it out uh as far as people using it because in my opinion like i said i don't want people to get on there and see the same thing i saw like oh yeah it's actually it costs more and you know you will get bitcoin back but it's, it's kind of canceling itself out uh but it, it does work uh i've used it myself uh to book book trips in fact um you know you don't just have to use travala to get cash back you could just use fold uh the, the debit card or you could just use um uh, lolly uh, because they are hooked up with American Airlines and hooked up with uh, some of the other ones as well. So there's other ways to do it. But uh, yeah, Travala, they've definitely uh, been around for a while now and they do work. They also have uh, Travala's uh, NFT project. It's called Travel Tiger NFT. And uh, uh, you have the ability to, to stake uh, 2,500 AVA tokens to activate the ship. Um, and the thing is, there's only 1,000 Travel Tigers that exist. Uh, right now, and the NFTs are randomly generated uh, utility collectibles minted on the Ethereum blockchain. And right now, each uh, Travel Tiger, uh, the floor value is valued at about 2.6 Ether or $9,800. So, uh, yes, they, they are definitely in the industry, been around for a little minute. So you can get the NFTs or you can get the cash back or Bitcoin back as far as buying uh, <clears throat> buying trips, buying flights. Oh my goodness. Hey, really quick. We got Reggie Milton here, but also Bitcoin. I just changed the title. Bitcoin all time high. Some people are saying 70K. I'm not seeing 70K. I am seeing 69, 800, 700 and some change, but Bitcoin all time high is official here. Reggie Middleton, what's going on? Hey, thanks, Reggie, for that name. You say you crushed him on CNBC. The guy's name was James All Toucher or whatever. That's the guy who's doing the AI. Yeah, also, okay, yeah, I know him. He's grifted again. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, you know, if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. So that's where I'm going to stay right here. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but How you uh, doing there, Reggie? I'm all right. Don't believe what you see on social media ads. Because if you have to buy social media ad space, then how strong is the message? You understand what I mean? I definitely do. Okay. So what do we talk about today, fellas? Uh, right now we are talking price action and money. Listen, the, the, the degenerates are here. Greed is becoming at an all time high. People want to know, Hey, do we park it in Bitcoin? Or if I don't have enough for a whole Bitcoin, where can I put my money to get enough? That is the discussions that's going on. We have to cater to it. Uh, and I mean, it's a real discussion, you know, uh, things are pumping people. Bills are being paid right now. Rents being made mortgages are being had cars are being bought and vacations are being taken all right so people want to know where to go so that was pretty interesting you're talking about craig wright and bs uh craig's rights uh bitcoin etf he just spills something out for a patent or he has a patent on it no you know to be honest well first of all i don't do price talk uh but you know just to address if you can't buy a whole bitcoin it's irrelevant you know that's like you know, not being able to buy a whole million dollars 
So if someone gave you $999,999.99, would you not take it? So it's irrelevant whether you buy a whole Bitcoin or not. You know, if you believe in the asset, then purchase the asset and purchase as much as you can prudently for, you know, given risk, reward, et cetera. You know, I'm not going to get into that. So, uh, but, you know, the nominal amount of Bitcoin, whether it's one whole, one, two, et cetera, is absolutely irrelevant. It's like water. You know, you go drink a whole quart of water. You know, you thirsty, you drink water. Okay. Um, as for Craig Wright, I threw Craig Wright's name. I did the video. I'll put it up on my YouTube channel. I use his name as just clickbait, to be absolutely honest. He did write the patent, but Craig Wright is so emotionally charged and people are so in their feelings that, you know, they either love or hate him. They don't even know why they love or hate him. Um, much of the hate to Craig Wright comes from the fact that he's published or he's derided did by the media, but take a look at who owns the media that derides him and then take a look at the patents that he wrote and who they affect, you know, and I'm not a Craig Wright fan. Don't get me wrong. You know, the dude can be a little rude. Okay. And disrespectful, but so can most of the guys in crypto, you know, they can't. That's true. That is so, very true. So I, you know, I don't favor or disfavor him, but I am a strong believer of fact and primary source research. So with that told, I'm going to start putting, and I'm not going to speak on my own portfolio, portfolio at all, okay? And I have a lot to say on that, but I'm not going to speak on it at all, okay? I'm going to start dropping dimes that are going to turn this industry apart. So I started with uh, the patent that Craig Wright wrote and Chain owns, and Chain, if I'm not mistaken, was Craig Wright's IP holding portfolio. He sold off a majority share of it to a fellow Australian named Craig Ayer, Ayer. Um, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Um, he appears to be, you know, uh, uh, a billionaire that got his money from uh, online casinos and gambling. Again, I don't know that to be a fact. It's also irrelevant. Who the players are, what their names and how they made their money is irrelevant. What's important is the actions. Okay. There's a patent that Enchain owns for multi-party computing. That's how Coinbase secures ETFs for cold storage. Yep. Okay. If that is patented and they're not paying license fees, that technology doesn't belong to them. It belongs to somebody else. The most successful ETFs in the history of ETFs is the Bitcoin ETF led by BlackRock, supported through cold storage, technology that is not owned by the custodian that's using it. Think about that. Okay, and everybody's worried about whether Craig White is Satoshi, who the hell cares? Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's suppose yeah, he's not, relevant. let's suppose he is. <laughs> that's highly irrelevant. It's highly irrelevant. Okay, and Chain, now I said that's a patent, um, very critical patent. And Chain has over 3,900 patent applications pending. 3,900 patent applications, all in blockchain and DLT. They have 1,090 issued patents, actual patents that were issued, all in blockchain and DLT. Even if they have 90% superfluous dust in material patents, the 10%, what are the chances of an exchange running its entire business on this technology not tripping several of those patents? Very slim. And we're not going to discuss like those yeah. tall brothers in Brooklyn. You know, we're going to totally disregard that. So mm -hmm. much of this industry is already patented and owned by a group of people, a group of entities. Okay. A lot of those entities are part of the crypto club. So they purposely will not turn on each other until, of course, enough money is at stake. Then, you know, capitalism and U.S. history starts to form. But until that point, they have their clubs and their corporates and everything else. But what do you think happens when the holders of the other IP who are not part of the club get, either get attacked or when they get paid for their IP? And I can tell you awesome. now, the most, in my opinion, some of the most um, ingenious inventions were created by people who weren't members of the club didn't have access to the 30 or 40 million dollars of venture capital to get started or just didn't have access to the media because the media is owned by the members of the club so this stuff has been going on in the background for some time now 
and I am going to throw grenades into the punch bowl. It's called the truth. Okay, and anything I say, just take a I'll provide a link. Just take a look at it, read it yourself. So, the, so Reggie, that, yeah. Reggie, let me ask, let me ask you. Uh, somebody asked me the other day about if there was some sort of black swan event that could you know uh crash bitcoin or or crash the price so to say and i told him it's probably going to be coinbase uh this bull cycle uh, was i correct <laughs> in telling them that it was coinbase because it was it's part of what you said but but also too like you said i've heard other people talk about the patents that they use for the etf for the cold storage that they're going to have to end up paying at some point and that could be a, a black swan event for people that they're not they don't see it coming at all because it's the biggest exchange yeah well it shouldn't Bitcoin is not is not really fundamentally driven, so it's a bunch of bots trading. So I can see that crashing Bitcoin price temporarily, but the reason it will crash is because they're bots trading. That's absolutely nothing to do with the fundamentals of what Bitcoin is worth yeah, or what it can do. Of course, yeah. it's people changing price action. Okay, yeah. um, they said that before the show. It's actually when we were talking about that. He was like, "Man, these uh, what was coin was that?" Uh, Terra. Uh, he was like, man, this old Terra bots buying Terra Luna. <laughs> yeah, it's just bots. Yeah. What a change he literally just said yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, it's just bots. People don't realize yeah. that. They think it's yeah. actual dudes behind the computer pressing buttons. Yeah. It's like, no, no. Not, not even close. That, 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 those days have passed, you know, years, many, many years ago. But um, you have to understand, there is no major technology industry sector or subsector that is not driven and ran by patents. As a matter of fact, usually the more patents you have, the more money is involved. Let's look at some of the biggest. Look at Apple. You know, for those who use iPhones, I'm definitely not one of those people. But if you use an iPhone, right, iPhone has over 1,200 patents embedded in it that they use. Does Apple have a problem making money? <laughs> you know, you have a problem using or accessing iPhones. Samsungs, which are much more intuitive and much more technology with folding screens and 200 megapixel cameras, they have well over 1,200 patents embedded in it. You think Samsung is starving? You're having a problem getting phones? You know, uh, the virus for the COVID, mRNA, okay, and the technology behind that, gene splicing, CRISPR, the light, the telephone, all this stuff is patented, right? You can tell when there's not a lot, of, a lot of money involved because people aren't moving to patent things and they're not inventing things in that space. When you get a lot of inventions in the space, it moves the space along faster. And when you have a lot of inventions, people want to protect their inventions, so they file for patents. So your open source mentality, patents are bad guys, don't know their financial history, are ignorant, or they're basically trying to shoo you away from patents because they're too busy patenting things. Okay, so just to put that, so this is not going to have anything to do with Bitcoin. Now, BTC price, that's a different story. Okay, in the video I put up, I should have been a little deeper. If you look at the risk uh, disclaimers in the um, issuance papers for BlackRock's ETF, they go through what happens if the market believes that another flavor of Bitcoin um, is the real Bitcoin versus BTC, okay? Or if IP pressures, and they don't go into this, but I will. I didn't do it deep in the video, but I will. Uh, suppose that N chain and N chain has said, or representatives of N chain has said that they will favor users of BSV, BSV, which is their version of Bitcoin, which is a fork from BCH, Bitcoin Cash, which itself was a hard fork from BTC, the original one. And BTC itself did a hard fork when it did Segwit, Segregated Witness, which is a technological change, just to go into the history for nerds. Um, if N chain enforces its patents, okay? It would be more expensive to do business if they favor BSV, which I believe they will. Okay, they say if you use our chain, you know, a, a lot of licensure would be embedded in the chain. Okay, but let's suppose they do that or they don't. If they enforce their patents, just transferring Bitcoin would be more expensive. Okay, if you use BTC versus transferring BSV. Okay, they can use their patents to put a lot of pressure in having BSV adopted. If that's the case, then the Bitcoin ETF that BlackRock has launched, what does it hold? What did it buy? BSV or BTC? BTC. Oh, you're saying which one they're going to hold as the real one? They're going. Oh, I get what you're saying. <laughs> well, what, what have they purchased? They, they purchased what? Ten billion dollars or what? I haven't looked, so I can't confirm because I haven't BTC, looked on yeah. the back end. But what, did, what the word BTC. is? Yeah, what the word is is Bitcoin, though. Yeah, everybody. Yeah, everybody. Now, 
Bitcoin is like an overarching, you know, technology. Because remember, you know, don't believe Gary Gensler and the SEC, right? These are not securities. This is technology. This is software. That's what it is. Okay. So Bitcoin is the software and you have different flavor, different forks. BTC, BCH, BSV, BS. Do you understand what I'm saying? So um, that was a joke, but you're not laughing. BS. You're yeah. going to have to laugh. There we go. Do it. Give me a I'm little over here, something. Listen, like... I'm over here doing research <laughs> in the background, Reggie. I'm, I just okay. saw another Trump token. Super, Super okay. Trump is out there for the uh, DJs out there. That's Trump. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so if um, if these patents or they win uh, the copyright suit, which I'm not taking that seriously because copyrights mean nothing relative to the patents. Okay. If they have enough force to give BSV um, the nod, then these $10 billion of tokens that BlackRock, et cetera, purchase are worth a lot less than anticipated. So what Bitcoin is or adopted, the flag position, the pole position of Bitcoin can change depending on market sentiment, depending on legal pressure, et cetera. And the reason why there's a lot of risk there is because you have you've been convinced by people from New York that this technology is an investment in securities. It's technology. Period. Go back to the internet days back in 1993, right? Would you have made more money purchasing IP packets, internet protocol packets, which is a little bits of information that allow this conversation to happen through the internet or sending emails, or would you make more money owning the actual technology itself, the internet? If you own the internet, everybody who uses the internet owes you money. Facebook, Amazon, Google, um, the whole nine. Or so, you so, could trade internet packets back and forth. So the question is, though, my thing is, this is where it's like the two plus two equals four and all of it makes sense. But the powers that be, when you're dealing with the Black Rocks and everything, they're doing it for bottom line. This the kind of what it, also what's kind of scary about what you said is what's what is stopping BlackRock, Fidelity, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and everybody else getting together and say, yeah, let's use a different type of Bitcoin. This is a different fork. Let's lose. Let's use this one. Even if the uh, hardcore community doesn't agree with it, so what? The people who are doing our ETFs have no clue. So, like you said, what do they do? Actually, switch over to a BSV or to a fork or to something else? Do you see that being possible at all? Not that it's possible. Look at the video I posted when I do the screenshot of the BlackRock uh, ETF prospectus. Just take a look at what they say they can do if they feel one flavor is superior to another. And that's even if the custodian and the clients disagree. It's already written down. The lawyers already took care of this. And so I have a lot more. Down. You know, I'm taking advantage of the fact that I read other people don't. Um, I have a lot of emotions, you know. You know, I have my feminine side, but I don't use them when I'm investing. I don't use them when I'm doing business. Very bad idea. So you want to sit there and decide, I like this person. I don't like that person, especially a person you don't even know based upon stuff you're getting from the media. And I'm not backing Craig Wright. I could care less about Craig Wright. Not, and this is not a negative thing, okay? Right. But, you know, I have businesses to run, okay? What's going to happen is I'm probably going to, I'm considering it, I'm going to drop another video showing how Bitcoin itself is patented. Mm. Yes, Bitcoin. And more than once. And by more than one entity. Yeah. You know, reading oh, yeah, is fundamental. Yeah. Riff. Remember those commercials back in like the 80s and 90s? Riff. Yeah, right, right. Good old dark. Reading is fundamental, man. So, so essentially what you're saying is that your favorite character in that, that Batman Beyond or whatever returns movie was the Joker because he just wanted to see <laughs> shit burn. Reggie <laughs> gets the slice of Re, Reggie gets the piece of box first and he just cuts a big circle in the middle and eats that motherfucker. <laughs> so y'all can have a rest. <laughs> well, 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 you know, actually, King, King, you know, you know what's, and, crazy, and, what's crazy about that is uh, as far as the movement from Bitcoin to BSV. You would essentially be for one it, it would be able to move faster the uh transfers but you basically be able to buy 110 dollars bitcoin now think about the the old old geezers who don't have any clue about investment with an etf and they say oh well we have another version of bitcoin that's faster and it actually is cheaper and we and they can pump the price from 100 dollars because that's what bsv is now it's like 110. imagine going from you know with bitcoin seventy thousand to 200. they're like cool that's a 3x now imagine going from 110 dollars to 2500 <laughs> that's going to look a lot different as far as portfolio wise and that's all yeah. they're going to see is because it's cash in and cash out 
So if they switch yeah. it to the DSV, they can say, hey, it's faster. We can transfer it uh, cheaper for ourselves. So it's cheaper for you, less fees. And you get more of an uh, increase in price. They're going to fall for a hook, line, and singer. And they're not going to have to have as much Bitcoin on the books. I, I know people keep saying they're going to run out of Bitcoin. It's like, no, they're not. They have plenty of ways around that. So uh, that's basically what I'm thinking as far as their strategy long term, as far as keeping this, this uh, game going. Yeah, And here's some disclaimers, okay? I don't have anything for against Craig Wright. Could care less. I don't care if he's Satoshi. I really, I have no idea why everybody's consuming so many brain cycles with something that's, in my opinion, relatively useless, considering the fact you have real things on the horizon. I don't own a single BSV. You said it was 110. I didn't even know. Okay. I don't own one. Can't say I really care. And as for things burning to the ground, this is how the technology industry works in the US. Okay. And most developed nations. Okay, the problem is, right, you did not have business people and finance people in the beginning. Okay, right. so they oh, didn't I do point, the cool uh, thing, I point that out right? early. They know yeah. it. I was like, it's no, yeah. it was no business people in this thing until mid to late 2017 is when the first one showed up for the most and, part. And, and now, now they're coming in after the fact and they're all these misconceptions. A lot of people say, well, Bitcoin's open source. You can't patent anything as open source. You can patent anything that you invent that's novel right innovative and hasn't been done before okay and that's value not anything there are certain things that are hard to patent like certain algorithms etc i'm not going to go into patent law and i'm not a lawyer by the way not a technologist my only full-time occupation is i'm a father and even that my kids are getting older but i read okay so going forward from this um when patents start to become ubiquitous and people start you have clarity in ownership then you can do things for real. You you can open source anything. I went through this before. I told you uh, last time I was online, you know, King, you're moving, right? So let's suppose you bought or rented your new apartment. I could get there before you, after you paid for it. And I get in there, I just open source it. And I have all the pretty girls move in. I take my big ashy feet, put them on your dining room table, okay? And I invite other everybody else to move in. I invite Zay to move in and his family, his next door neighbor. I'm not charging anybody. It's all open source. I just open source King's apartment. But you see, King has either a lease or a deed to that apartment. And it wasn't mine to open source in the first place. But I still open sourced it. That doesn't make it legal or right because it didn't belong to me. If you open source something that belongs to you, it may be very well be open source, but it's still illegal because it wasn't mine. So if, if someone has an idea, it's unique, novel, and they patented. They that idea belongs to them. If someone else comes in five years later and open writes software on it and open sources it, that doesn't make it legit. It wasn't theirs. I could steal your car and make a free Uber and just give everybody free rides. It's still a stolen car. In order to oh. open source something properly, you have to own it. So if you believe in open source, true open source, you believe in IP rights and IP protection. So you can't disbelieve patents but believe open source it's just a fact this is how the law works how do i know this i'm not a lawyer i read okay and uh the theories and behind patents are ensconced in if i'm not mistaken the 14th amendment of the constitution mm. goes all the way back to the beginning i think it's the 14th you can look that up but it's in there somewhere Re really quick, folks. I'm, I'm seeing everybody talk price action 70k. Listen, and and this is this is how it happens. This is how it happens. The I keep asking, where is everyone seeing 70k? I'm only seeing 69 and some change. People are saying Robin Hood and Coinbase. Really, y'all giving me Robin Hood and Coinbase <laughs> as the two price like indicators you're getting it from? No, no. Stop looking at those people. <laughs> Listen, let, let, this, let, let, let me. Let me, let me no, ahead, hold on. No, I gotta give it to him. Let me explain ahead, this business to you all real quick, folks. Uh, Coinbase and Robinhood is in their best interest to post the all-time high first. Doesn't actually mean we got there. We just it's in their interest to post it first, so more people will come to them. They will get the value. I highlight. Like, I want to see someone. Somebody said crack it. I didn't see it there. Don't give me a centralized place like Robinhood or Coinbase. I'll take Gemini's. Give me somebody else. I'm not taking those. Uh, we only got a few more minutes left. I know Zay got to run. Uh, Reggie, you got any last messages for anyone for you? We head out for the day. Yeah, I'm going to explain how the price thing works. So, all right, all right, let's, the get, price let's is, get this. You know, again, remember I told you finance and business guys did not 
you know, weren't early participants in crypto. Not it was, analogy. you know, engineers, propeller heads, et cetera. So exchanges are not exchanges. They're not like the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ. They're broker dealers where they take their own crypto and they sell it to you or buy from you, or they connect two people and have them buy and sell each other's crypto. Okay. And they're little islands in and of themselves. So Coinbase can't give you the price of Bitcoin. Coinbase can give you the price of Bitcoin ran through their company, but that's not the price of Bitcoin, right? Each and every so-called exchange, which is really a broker dealer, that doesn't mean they're security. So I'm not going there, right? Is an island onto itself. So you can see, well, it's warm on this island. It's 75 degrees on this island, but it's 72 degrees on a different island. And it's 80 degrees on a different island. That's how Bitcoin works. And things that really would dictate the price, large purchases or large sales, don't even show up because those are done over the counter. Okay, so you don't even see what price those exchanges at, the, the, what price those assets exchange at. And because it's the largest, the most limited exchange, those are the ones that will really move the price. But you don't get to see that. The reason why the price is probably going up is because you're getting large OTC um, sales, okay? But those sales are purposely not going through exchanges because they'll shoot the price up and the buyer will be bidding against itself. So what's happening is all these, you know, Buyers are, are sell, or buyers are coming in, making large OTC purchases. It's not going through the exchange bid ask mechanism, but it's drying up the supply of available Bitcoin because other big holders simply won't sell. So you have supply and demand, but there's a, a, a tail on it, a lag. And that's most likely what's happening. Okay, plus bots will go chase price action. So if Bitcoin goes up 10% now or down 10%, those are bots. Okay. And if you're trying to trade, Bitcoin is good, but you could do better with you have more volatility. I'm not a trader. I don't really do trading. I do hardcore fundamental analysis. And that's just, when you look at exchanges, all exchanges probably have different prices because they're different things. That's not the price of Bitcoin. That's the price of the exchange's business. Okay? There it is. Much appreciate that, Reggie. As always, great seeing you again. Can't wait to have you on soon. Uh, Bitcoin Zay, what you got for us? Oh, yeah. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. Appreciate you, Reggie. Oh, yeah, for the insights and everything. And remember the real price of Bitcoin. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. So who cares, man? <laughs> there we go. 70K. Uh, it looks like it was touched on trade. I saw trade view in the background. I Listen, I didn't see a 70. I saw the high 6.9. But regardless, we'll give it a 70K, whatever. Happy Friday. 70K Bitcoin. It was 15 two years ago. Don't worry about it. Okay. Right, it was 15 two years ago. Uh, <laughs> This is what I like that I just saw, though. We just uh, we tested it as, as we did reach it, but we just saw a slight dip. As always, the weekend, I always look forward to seeing what's going to happen to Bitcoin and crypto on the weekend. Uh, so let's get to some DJ time, charts, fundamentals, everything out there. Let's get our heads into it. Let's see what happens this weekend. Get ready for another good week. As always, thanks for watching the show. Reggie, thanks for dropping by. As always, love to hear your, uh, your insight and your thoughts on the market uh from from somebody who's been around as well so make sure you all smash that like and share and we'll see you all next week cheers okay peace